I don't know the color to use. And fully say that you guys know what to do. So the thing is, I'll just try to review a particular design so that I can just go to one together. Yeah. Yes, I'm there. I can go on to to this business this particular thing. Let me try to present. My, let me try to share my screen. I think that's the um, Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Thanks, Master. So we can see your screen. I think I can download this. It's not easy to do that. Okay. From this particular solution, uh, this person, I said you should use example of brands that uses complementary color scheme. Complementary color scheme are just colors opposite each other. Color you. You have the card, you have Walmart, you have card. Card is, I can see three colors here. Uh, as not complementary. And going forward, we have complementary screen. Okay, that being said. Okay. Child X as each complementary. Both color scheme uses three colors, but once use adjacent colors then any other color. But child X uses three colors. If we distance to each other, at least almost the same distance, just like a triangle. So this guy gives some examples. Then to the last part. I said in our previous class that the search is very, very important. The things you have to do is that you just have to be very empathetic to your, to your clients, understand what they need, carry out your research. And I said a blend of purple and burgundy. Now, last class, and I can remember that I said something about purple in other European countries, meaning then most meaning dates or maybe your money, so on. So, for such a particular country, now you can't use purple. That's why your research is very, very important. So after carrying out your research, tell your clients this particular color is not suitable, this particular color is suitable. Then possibly if the customer to perceive that use that color scheme, then you can just include it in one of the samples you are giving that particular client. And I think that you guys should be fine with that client. Are you guys here? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Oh, thank you. I'll just go straight to this work. I'll just go straight to this start. Okay. I'm going to talk on typography. So today I'll take my time to take you through the concepts of typography. That is typography in design, the basics, how you can differentiate between the font, at least the difference between the fonts and typeface, classification of typeface, I want to use the psychology of each type choices. I think the psychology of cell fonts, psychology of sensors, psychology of the creative and speech fonts, and also combining type, and then how you can know that this particular font combines well with the other. Am I, am I audible enough? Yes, you are. Uh, thank you. So unlike typography now, unlike color psychology, you have to make your research. Maybe 
use samples to your client that use this particular color, use that particular color. But for typography, there's nothing like that. You have to use your intuition, use your initiative. You don't have to ask your client that which typography thing should I use. That is very, very bad. It is assumed that you as a graphic designer should be able to know what type of font you are using for that design. And the type of font you are using for that design solely depends on the audience. The audience that design will be the audience that design is for. So typography in digital world is more than just picking the pretty font. Choosing a proper typeface for your design influences the reader's decision subconsciously. And also, excellent typeface can create a solid visual hierarchy that complements your graphical balance and be the centerpiece of the design. So how good or bad your design is also depends on your usage of fonts. That is the fonts you are combining together, how good they are and how compatible those fonts are, which will ultimately decide if that your design is a very bad or a very good design. Are you guys following? Yes, we are. Okay. So a good type system aims to create a unique branding. It empowers, so let me try to make this very good. Can you guys see my screen like this? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, a good yeah. type system aims to create a unique branding. It empower user experience, influences people through emotion, direct attention. A good typography comes from paying attention to tiny details. That is, this can make the difference between a work, a design work that is average, and a design work that is very, very good. So going forward, you have some anatomy of typeface. So all these things can be so overwhelming. So, but we have some basic terms that you have to know that if you can't do without those basic ones, ones like canning, leading, tracking, there may be fonts, font weights, the stroking, and all of that. So the first one is X height. X height measures the height of all lowercase, lowercase letters that are parts of the same type piece. Let me go to the previous screen. Okay. On the word X size. Can you see X size? Here? That is the distance between this letter Y. Can you see my cursor? Yes, sir. Can you see my cursor? Okay. Yes, on Y. On y. Okay. That is the distance between this letter Y. And this particular line, the stamped XI, that is, make sure the height of all lowercase letters that are part of the same typeface. Also, cap height is synonymous to something like capital, capital letter, that is, the height of your caps lock, the capital letter you are using for that particular font. And also, we have tracking. Tracking is just like making a particular font. That is the proportional space between all letters in a particular body. So let me try to show you what I'm talking about without tracking. Without tracking. Okay. I'll, let me say I have something like this. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Let's see, we have something like this. So tracking is when you have equal distance between all these particular letters. So for me to have equal distance between all these particular letters, I can just decide to do something like this. I'll pick the shapes here. Can you see? So something like this, equal distance between all these letters is what we call tracking. Then for the other one, that is leading. Leading is also so, is can also be called line height. That is the distance between the space between base lines. Something like this. Let me try to show you down to let's see how something like. This.
Gel Tim Erçkan. Yes. Let's assume you have some sentences to I'll try to dictate this. So leading for this particular block of sentences is just like something having equal space. At the distance between this particular place, this the first the first line. The space here. The space here is called leading at the line eyes. So all these particular terms also influences how legible your fonts are, how readable those fonts are, and how clear your fonts are. So going forward, you have canon. Canon is space between two individual letters. It is used when you need to move only one letter because it is too far or too close to its companions. So there are some fonts that automatically there will be some space between each letters of that word. Let me see. I have something like this. Let me use one font here. Find this font here. So the planning, the planning here is okay. Let me try to look for another font. That's maybe some. That's some very distance between the text. And also this planning, it is mostly used by logo designers. Maybe they want to make. The word mark logos that we are using letters throughout for that logos. We want to make them the letters between that logo to be very consistent. The space between the, that logo is very consistent. We can just increase the space. I want to increase the space between this letter D and E. I can break it up then possibly. I break it up and possibly drag. As you can see, there's a distance. The distance between this letter D, this letter D and E is different from the space between this E and S. So can is just space between some particular elements, particular letters in your word. So that's just the meaning of canon. Why tracking is equal distance, all three. And also we have font weights. Font weight is the evidence of a stroke of a font. Some common font weights include the lights, semi bold and bold. The font weight is how heavy your design, your characters are for your design. And also that, but the evidence or the weight of that particular font depends on each family because there are some fonts, eh? they are solely regular. You don't have any weight. For example, now let me try to look for a family. Let me try to put East. Okay. I guys see the weight of this compared to something like this. Compared to something like this. You can see the weight of these particular letters is very different. This one is heavy weight, right? This one is light weight. So there are some fun that comes with selection, different weights. Maybe they are italic, italics or regular. They are most, some are very bold and very dark. It depends on the font family you are using. So actually, that's the meaning of font width. Then you also have lowercase, uppercase, italics, and stroke. Okay, for this particular design, I can try to change the stroke to have something like this. Let me duplicate this. I can move the fill color and add. Stroke to it. I see the stroke. So this is what you mean by stroke. 
I ain't got to, I ain't got to see my ice cream. Yes. I I so this is what you mean by stroke. I see this particular letter is different. This one, I'm also different from the one at the top here. Yeah. Another person just from me. All right, thank you. I'm so going for. So choosing the right font is like picking the right color. And like colors do for designs, fonts are used to elicit specific response that is, they evoke some certain feeling, create unique mental association with the brand. And each type of font comes with its pros and cons. That is, some fonts you have to use them wisely. You must, they must not be too much on your design because some are very heavy to the eye. So that's why you have to use them considerably. You have to know how to combine fonts together. Let me show you a particular design. Let me show you a design. Look at this design now. How you guys see this design? Yes. Yes. Look at this design. See the usage of fonts. You can see the, there's a stroke font over here. You have yeah. a very thick font there. Then possibly the contents. You have light fonts and bold fonts. You can see how this design, this design is a very cool design. And also for this, this particular design, I use a, a single fonts for this design all true and it is actually looking very nice so your design your the use of typographic and design maybe your design is very bad and very good and also it communicates a certain feeling at least there's some particular fonts you have to use for a law firm as some particular fonts you have to use for a fashion brand as a particular font you have to use for a formal brand and also informal brands have their own specific font and the way you use your font depends on how good you are with typography. Then going further, there are thousands of free fonts available today, but most can be broken down into five broad categories. Okay. But before that, I'll try, I'll try to differentiate between the meaning of fonts and typeface. A typeface, okay, let me show you. Let me show you something here. Let me delete all this. So this particular type is East Eastland, as you can see, it has varying weights. It has varying weights. So can you guys see all these things here? The East Roman Church in Italic Extra Light. Lights offset. Can you guys see all this? Yes. Yes, sir. So, so this particular Island, East Man, can be termed as a typeface. Why this picking one out of this particular category? That is whether you are picking a light, whether you are picking offset, whether you are picking a bold or black. Picking one of these particular one is called a font. That is using this particular, this single one is called font. While using everyone together collectively, it's known as a typeface. Do you understand? So a font is the variation of weight of a typeface that is area regular, area italic, area bold. Why typeface is a family of fonts that is the area itself, times new Roman, then possibly Adana. So going forward, we have five classes of fonts, which is cell fonts, sans cell fonts, slab cell fonts fonts, speech fonts, then possibly decorative fonts. So I'll pick the first one now, which is the cell fonts. Cell fonts is the oldest type of fonts, which is first examples appearing as the early 15th century. So the word cell refers to the small strokes, that is, all cell fonts comes with a particular stroke, which is present at the tops, at the top or bottom of each letter. So today's cell phones are among the most popular, among the most popular. And I'm not to try to unmute. Let me just speak to the speaker. All right, thank you. So today's cell phones are among the most popular and most typefaces 
movies. It starts like Times New Roman, being ever present in books, documents, and even some logos. As you, can, you will notice that most of your writings, most of your editorials, even inside your books, your journals, your novels, the stuff you read, and possibly your letter aids, you can see that the body of text, the type of fonts used there are mostly Times New Roman or related family to Times New Roman. So there are many subtypes within the different safe classification. In each classification fonts, and also all these subtypes, they share the same characteristics. That is, they can be categorized together. So the first subtype is modern serif fonts. Can you see the fonts here? This one has, uh, in, our, in the last slide, I said something like, all serif fonts has strokes, either at the top or at the bottom. You can see the stroke here is slightly different from the good traditional serif fonts because the stroke here is very flat and very stylish. As you can see this particular font now, it is elegant and classy. You know that this particular font should work very well for fashion or uh, any luxury brands because, yeah, for fashion or any luxury brands. You can't expect me to use this particular font for maybe a letter edge or a journal like that. Are you guys following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, sir. Other fonts are recognizable by their team long horizontal series and clear cut thick and thin transitions in their strokes. The stress is vertical and there is no slants on the letters. So they are not suitable for large amount of body text, either on the web or prints, but they can look really eye catching and very elegant in large sizes. So let me try to show you what I'm trying to say here. Let me change this particular one to a just I see the font here. So imagine me using, let me, let me try to create a body of text. I'm making the class very podcast possible. Even though this type of is a very theoretical story. But I need you to see what I'm doing because that will really you to understand the class. Let's just assume that this is a body of text. And this is my letter edge. Let's see. This is my my see. Uh, okay. 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 Imagine me using a DDoS for this body of text. Can I see how the thing looks? It looks very weird. Can I see this particular font? It looks very weird. Compared to when I use it to, as a big caption, maybe. Then, class. Try to change this to bigger. I think I see that it looks very classy and elegant on bigger on bigger sizes compared to smaller sizes. So these smaller sizes now it will be very hard for your clients or your target audience to read this particular font. So that's why this D dots is advisable for it's not they are not still for large amounts of body text either on web or print, but they can look really eye catching and very elegant at large sizes. Then also you have another subtype, which is old self. This old self is somehow similar to the food ones. Okay, these are the 
these are the crude these are the crude safe types they are the traditional ones they are the oldest and this can be seen in curved strokes and letters with thick to thin transitions looking somewhere like letters done with a pen ink unlike modern typefaces the thick time the thick or thin transition is more great and not so obvious as you can see this particular font looks very similar to time news woman so let me try to show you what i'm talking about so let me change this to times new woman now see the differences and so do So this is the G dots. Now change this to times new Roman. We now compare the times. I see the difference. If, if you be able to see that this times new Roman looks more legible compared to this G dots. Then also you have something like gamma. Let me let me change it to gamma much. Gamma much. And you see that this garment is almost similar to the Times New Roman. So this garment and Times New Roman, they are the traditional safe types. They are the oldest. So the old size typefaces are considered to be the best for large amounts of body text on paper. So that's why you find them used heavily in newspapers, magazines, books, novels, and whatsoever. But going forward, you have Traditional typeface. These traditional typeface are just in between the old ones and the modern ones. It tends to combine some of the features of the old ones and some of the features of the modern ones. So some of the popular typefaces for these categories are okay. Good job. Traditional typefaces are in transition from old style to the modern. They come after great typefaces such as Garmont and Castle, and before the modern such as the Dot and Bodoni. So some of the categories that fall, categories of serifons that fall under this are Times New Roman, Baskerville, Freshman, Chata, and Relax. Okay, let me try to show you what that Baskerville looks like. Let me change this to the cash flow. Let me change this to so this is the cash flow. Thank you. So they almost look very similar. They look very similar, almost the same thing. So just from which as you can see, this bar because we is more classy than the Times New Roman. That's why they are in between. The local views are in between the, the modern and the old types of serif fonts. So we now move to the psychology of serif fonts. So serif fonts are popular with companies that are seeking to portray elegant, sophisticated, and serious brands. That is, they are more associated with formal brands. Logos with these types of fonts display an air of tradition, acceptability, and Reliability. So we have organizations like academic, editorial, financial fields, civil service funds because of their conservative and respective appearance they give off. So you know that, for example, now we have particular clients now you love farm for poetry. So the type of funds that should come to your mind should be service funds. Then possibly, possibly they might have their own choice of funds, but this is the natural fund that blends well for such type of Brands. So going forward, we have examples of say we have the Jagger, Montana, and Bicavi. Then these are brands that use the rich type of fonts. We have JP Morgan, Vogue, Bob Berry, Immobile, and Light. Now to the second type of font is Sanse font. Unlike the cell fonts, these ones are with no strokes. That is, you can never find them with strokes either at the top or at the bottom of each letter. The cell font is always for a cleaner, they are more cleaner, they are more modern, and this they are more cleaner, more modern, and this 
contrast makes them pair well with serif fonts. That is, they pair well with their counterpart, which is serif fonts. And also, just like the serif fonts, they are very old, but they are not as old as serif type of fonts. So, why serif fonts focuses heavily on embracing tradition and history? Sans serif fonts takes the opposite and embraces simplicity. The feeling of being modern, very clean and modern look. So the main characteristics of serif fonts is in their use of simple and clean lines that are the same width all through. That you can never find them with. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. An example of that serif font is you have Budo, no, you have Poppins. I have problems. I don't have problems. Okay. Look at this particular font. Okay, this east one. So, east one is here. Look at this font. Compare this east man with Times New Roman. As you can see, this Times New Roman has strokes. You can see all these tiny strokes compared to this with no strokes. That is, they are the same all two. The entire length that is nothing like so either at the top or at the bottom. So just like the serif font, we also have subtypes under the same serif fonts. The subtypes are the grotesque, you know, new grotesque, humanist, and geometric. Then the these grotesques are the oldest form of sans serif types. A lot of these types exist only in capitals or in extremely old specimen books. These typefaces are characterized by very awkward character widths, distribution, and irregular curves. So, example of this Gotex font is Franklin Gothic font. Let me show you something like that. Let me try to change this to Franklin Gothic. I need to use font now. Okay. This is a parking gothic font. Let me try let me go test B key. Let me change to go test. Let me duplicate this. Change this to go test. And also we have shelter go test. I have so test. Sure so that's it for good test. Then no, another subtype is new good test. It is also called traditional, just like Sanchev. That is, it is in between the good test and the modern Sanchev types. So they are commonly or rarely and include some of the most commonly used sans. They are based on the late good test. It's more careful construction. And a new field for aesthetics that is, they are very clean compared to the grotesque. So, example of this new grotesque is Roboto, Helvetica, I Gothic, and MS Gothic. Let me try to show you an example. Let me change this to Roboto. Roboto. Let me change this to Helvetica. Can I see the difference? You can see that this Roboto and Helvetica looks very similar compared to this one. And they look more classy compared to this two at the top. So that is it for new Gotex. So we also have some another subtypes. Parking Gothic, Gotex, Helvetica is a new Gotex. Then we also have humanist typefaces. Humanist typefaces are the most common calligraphic of the sans serif types. That is, this one looks more, it looks more stylish. They are characterized by some variation in the line and width, in the inline width, and the fact that they are more legible than other sans serif. So, example of this is Give Sans My Let me show you that. Let me duplicate this. Let me change it to Give Sans. Give Sans. 
Mm -hmm. This one is different from this. It look more stylish compared to this. The other counterpart, which is new, grotesque. Calibri. Let me change this to Calibri. Can I see the letter D here? This letter D looks more classy compared to the other counterparts. And also, you also have geometric type skills, just as their name implies. Geometric shapes combine, combine to create characters. They can be recognized via the optically circulated letter O. That is, most of these, the fonts under these geometric types, they are mostly rounded. So, example is an example of our geometric is blue time. Let me try to open blue time here. Blue time. As you can see, this blue time is looks very round and circular. It looks very round and circular. They are all Sounds they are all looks like a perfect, perfect cycle. That's the meaning of circular is all and otherwise very rectangular. Then going for the psychology of Sansei font. Sansei font gives off a feeling of being cultural that is not so not so formal, that is informal. They are very friendly and very approachable compared to the formal counterparts. Which are the series fonts. So companies who want their brands to appear more youthful and relatable tends to use sans serif fonts. So you tend to find sans serif fonts in companies like Facebook, Hulu, LinkedIn, Adidas, Airbnb, and the likes. And possibly the most common type of sans serif font is Elvetica. Yeah. And also on websites, you tend to find more, more sans serif fonts than serif fonts. Sans serif fonts are mostly regarded as the most common and the most widely used type of fonts because of their clarity and how good they are. And going forward, we have slab serif fonts. So this slab, this slab serif font is just like a variant of the serif font, just like the name implies. You tend to find slabs at the end instead of just strokes. You tend to find every slabs either at the top or at the bottom of each letter. So slab serif font, are you guys still following me? Can you guys still hear me? Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. yes. Yes. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. So these typefaces are bold and emphasize a departure from their classic counterparts. The fit that define serif fonts are larger and look like, just like slabs. So these types of fonts are characterized by their solid and bold approach and are more at home with modern brands than classical ones. These fonts can either be rounded or angular. With some closely resembled typewriter, resembling typewriter styles. We have psychology of slab, slab serif fonts. So these fonts are all about loud and bold images, bold image. They convey a sense of confidence, dependability, and creative thoughts thanks to their heavy lines and less delicate serif that is less strokes. Brands attempting to make a big slash, a big splash, or indicate how innovative their ideas and products are, use slab safe types, as they can help to communicate a sense of importance and needs. The example of brands that use these slab safe fonts are Sony, Honda, and Volvo. As you can see here, you can see slabs, every, every slab compared to normal strokes in regular safe types. You can see every slab, look at Volvo. And at the top or at the bottom of the letters. And also, you have another class of another type of typeface is script fonts. So, script fonts are much more elaborate and detailed than other font categories. They learn the special look and feel that can elevate designs to a more elegant and sophisticated level. So, because it replicates handwriting, that is, they are mostly. 
associated with Android and that is poly plants. So they also have a more personal touch than other type fishes. Depending on the font, they can be, they can also feel fun or more traditional and old fashioned. So generally, it is recommended to use this particular font sparingly as they affect readability and make the word or letter letter marks hard to understand and scale. For example, now imagine me using a script font for a body of text like this. Let me use a script font for something like this. So you can now do that as script font. So can you see how this looks now? It is not clear. It looks very bad. It is very it looks confusing too. And possibly your target, your customer can just assume that this designer does not know what to do. I can't really decide to do something like this for, for a sensitive hand. For example, if I want to I want to type a letter now, maybe a letter H or the contents of that letter. Imagine me using this particular font for the body of text there. It looks very old and weird. You know, so you have to use them sparingly. Look at this particular design. Look at this design. Look at where I use this switch font on your. You can see I use it for the only for on your and us and all others. I use all other fonts. So you have to use them sparingly because it can affect the readability of and clarity of your design. And also you have psychology of switch fonts. So script font evokes ideas of elegance, creativity, freedom, and femininity. They are curved and flourished styles. Also communicate a more hands-on and personal approach to business. So companies that want to convey a particular emotion can use script fonts to, to great effect. And similarly, script fonts are perfect for those attempting to transmit a sense of unique and artful thoughts. So that was it for script fonts. You have to use them sparingly. So these are example of script fonts. You can see they look like Android. So you can see them in Instagram. You can see them in Johnson. These are brands that use script fonts. You can see Cadillac and possibly use Coca-Cola. Then lastly, we have decorative fonts. As the name implies, they are de very decorative and they look very stylish. We either call them decorative or display fonts. They represent a unique and appealing typeface. Most decorative types of fonts are usually are useful for a variety of industries and needs, as they are generally tailored to specific to specific companies. Can you get you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you. So the creative nature and unique characteristics of these fonts makes this font family an option. To explore if your brand really wants to stand out from the crowd. That is, you want to be distinct, you want to stand out from all other brands, it tends to use these particular fonts. And also, typical sizes of a decorative font is that they are casual, they are creative, and very original. That is, authentic, flexible, and urban. So, example, uh, IBM, you can see this IBM, this Disney. And this possibly Fanta Lego. They are crafted. You can never find out these fonts, these fonts anywhere. You can, you can never even download this font. You can never see them online. They are not downloadable fonts. So you understand. They are original to this specific brand. That's why they call them decorative fonts. And going forward, I want to explain how you can combine type and design. So if you know that a particular typeface works well with your order. And mostly this is done majorly by practicing. There is no you know that the font works with the other if you don't press the pass, maybe place it beside each other. I'm going to look at look at this vividly. It is serious. For example, now look at this design. Look at this typeface now. So how will I know that this script font is not working well with this font? This the dot font. So I have to place them beside each other. And I can now come to the conclusion that this particular font does not work well. You have to keep on trying fonts. So the, the best way to be very good with typography is just practicing. There are different fonts. Check out some fonts. Then maybe 
want to, want to know that this font is not working well, so that then try to find out why is this font not working out. Then possibly I should know that this speech font is not working well with this dot font because this speech font looks too stylish and too slant. It is not clear. It is not visible. It affects the ability. Do you guys understand? Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yeah. And also, the first one is choose complementary fonts. That is, many fonts have distinct moods or personalities. Some are serious, some are casual, some are playful, and also some are elegant. And that person here is the speaker. All right, thank you. So you want to make sure that the moods of your font choices matches the purpose of your design. For, for instance, now a script or calligraphic typeface may be appropriate for a wedding invitation. Okay, let me show you a particular design. Let me show you a particular wedding idea of this while ago. Okay, look at this design now. Look at this design. You can see that I use a script font for for the name of the bride and groom, Ethanel Winfield and Odron Ayo Afolabi, compared to all other things on the design. I majorly use it because it looks more stylish and elegant. So from these statements now, a script or calligraphy typeface may be appropriate for a wedding invitation, but not for a business newsletter. Imagine me using this particular font, for a later age, come on, that person, <clears throat> a big, a big trouble. It don't work well together. It is very weird and it looks very, very bad. That person can just decide that this person does not want, know what he's doing. How can you use this kind of font for these very formal and sensitive documents? So that's just it. Use, choose complementary fonts. Find out what that design is for. Check out the target audience, then possibly ask your clients what the design will be used for. Then now decide what type of fonts you want to use for that particular design. And also establish a visual hierarchy. As you can see here from this design, from this particular newspaper designer, firstly, just try to maybe adjust or shift your focus from this particular design. Look at maybe look at the edge of your screen. So automatically you'll be dragged. If you try to see this, start with this song first. Subconsciously, if you attracted with this color red, then possibly after seeing this Saturday song, you now see this Nigeria at war with itself because of how big and how bold the text is. So that's how far the text can decide how good your design is. Then also, traditional publishing formats like newspapers and magazines. Offer good examples of how to apply a visual hierarchy to fonts. We combine fonts in a way that visual that visually separate different texture elements like headlines, subheadlines, body text. As you can see, they use different font widths for the sub for the subheadlines here, different different font width for the headlines, and possibly they use different font widths for the dates and all for this particular design. So let me try to show you something like a visual hierarchy here. So let me say, I want to come up with a design for a graphics design class. Let me say this is the contents. I want to make this very good. I want to make this very good. So let me try to create something here. Just, just follow me. I will see what I'm trying to say. Sometimes.
Ben mengi şey taşlı var falan. Rantı bir de price şu kan şu di. Just on this check price. Okay. As you can see, looking at this design, automatically you see this design class first. Yes, you see this graphic design. So you see this graphic design class first, and after seeing this graphic design class first, you now see this price next after seeing this particular one because because of the font width and how big the text size is. So I advise you that whenever you want to maybe first you have to find out what that design is for. Maybe you want to showcase some products. So that means that your images on that particular design should be very clear and very good. You understand because you want them to see that fixed. Maybe you are displaying some product for sale, uh, maybe e-commerce site or something like that. Then possibly for designs like maybe you want to create a banner, you want to create a class. You are teaching people, you are teaching people stuff. Maybe you are teaching them something else. I want to create a banner for it. You have to make after making the content, which is the graphic design class, very good. Then the price, you have to make it variable. You have to prioritize the actual contents, the elements on that design. So with that, the customer, your target audience tends to see all those things first before any other thing. So look at looking at this design now. You see this graphic design class first. Then after seeing this graphic design class first, so you see this price, which is 50,000 yeah. So here I just use something like visual hierarchy to prioritize. The elements on that particular design. So that's how far hierarchy can decide and can ruin your design. It can make your design very good and it can also make your design look very bad. So with that being said, we also have mixed serif fonts and sans serif fonts together. So whenever you are running short of maybe you don't you are confused on how to combine fonts together. It is addressable. Serif fonts and sans serif fonts mostly work together. So just open your design software. Compare the fonts, the say fonts you want to use, and the sans say fonts you want to use. place them beside each other. They now decide does this particular font work well. So, for example, I want to use, I want to blend. If looking at the design, I use a particular typeface. Yes, this is bold and this is very thick. I use Eastman. I use Eastman where you try this is the typeface I'm using. So, for example, I want to change this typeface now. Let me change this to. Thanks, Let me change the contents here. Let me change this to times new one. Times. As you can see, it also works. Yes. This times new one also works for this body. And here, I'm using a sans serif font that is fonts without strokes. Here, for the body of text, I'm using a serif font the ones with strokes. So that's just how, that's just how it is. Mix serif fonts and sans serif fonts together. So running short on time, I need to pick two font script. Try one serif, try one serif and one sans serif. The two tends to work together well, particularly on contrasting sizes. And also avoid pairing fonts that are too similar. You have trouble establishing a hierarchy because these fonts are not usually distinguishable from each other. And any difference that are discernible may look more like a mistake than a proposed full choice. So most times, fonts belonging to the same family. That is, fonts that look together. Does not tend to work together. So, for you to know that, you just have to check it out. Place them beside each other. 
the name in the work well or not. Now going forward, we have use fonts from the same family. Okay, like I did earlier on. Before I change it to Times New Roman, I used Eastman. Eastman. As you can see, I'm using a very bold one here for this graphic design class. This one too is bold, but the content here is not that bold. I think that they're regular. And you have bold there. So all this design, for this particular design, I used a rule, just a single typeface. And you can see that they work well together, they blend well together as long as the width differs. So that's just it. Use fonts from the same family. Using typefaces from this family is always a safe bet. After all, we are created to work together. Look for families that come with a range of options, different weights, styles, and cases. To ensure that we have enough variation for your design purposes. Then also limits your number of fonts. For design, it is assumed that less is more. It will not be it will not be advisable for you to use five fonts, or even six, up to six, or even seven to read and break your design look very cloudy. So it is advisable to use the maximum of three or four fonts together. Even two itself is enough. But it depends on how good you are with design. You can tend to match even four fonts together. As long as we are working with it it will be fine. Look, looking at this design now. This Taylor solution of Nigeria is the same font with this Shagam chapter of the states. Likewise, the same font with this congratulations, but different from different fonts, different from this Misakiyemi. I use another font for this Misakiyemi. Also, another font for this Yogi, and also a scripting font. So this for this design, I use like three, like three or four fonts, three or four font for this design and you can see that it all works fine it comes out very well so that's that's just it depends on how good you are with fonts you can mix keep it keep things simple use one or two or mark and marks of three and marks of three that's an appropriate rule of thumb in certain applications and it's common in editor designs like magazine spreads but it is by no means a hard and fast rule that is can combine as many as possible. It depends on how good you are. It's type pieces. So then for just for the last part, practice, practice, and practice. I've been saying this almost every time that you can't know the fonts that work well together. You don't choose them together. Taste them side by side, compare and contrast that is this are they looking very well? Are they visually appealing? So stuff like that. Last but not the least. Use a friendly suggestion rather than a rule. Practice combining fonts on your own. As with many skills, becoming competent involves a lot of trial and error. And, with, and as with most creative endeavors, the art of pairing fonts is often a subjective one. There is no rigid formula to finding the perfect font combination. So take risk, experiment, and use your intuition. So in conclusion, take these typography basics as a starting point, and if they serve you well, use them. If not, don't let them stifle your creativity. That is, use your intuition. Be very creative with designs. At times, you can even come up with your design, with your type. It depends on how good you are. I know some designers that just they type out and draw on paper. Then after doing that paper, you now transfer it to any software that comfortable with. Then choose out. Whatever it is, they type out. Whatever it is, they, they do that on that paper. Then, boom, they have a font. So that's just how good and how beautiful these are our videos. Can be very creative. Come up with fonts, blend fonts, practice, practice, and practice. For you to be very competent. So with that being said, I think I'm done with this class. You can all you can ask your questions. I'll meet, I'll meet your mic and ask your questions if you have questions for me. And also, I have tax. Or you shall, but ask your question first. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Awesome. Awesome. Ask your question. You have questions.
So are you guys telling me that all the things I've been seeing is well understood? For me, I understand yes, what you said. Yes, sir. For me, I understand everything, sir. Understand. Yes, sir. I want to build you on something, sir. Actually, my sister yeah. was called yeah. for the past few weeks, so I just got okay. the system. So I don't know if I can still submit my assignments. Yeah, submit to assignments. You can still do it, submit to assignments. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. All right, now submit to assignments. So that's just it. I have some tasks for you, just like the previous assignment. This one too is very simple. So this tracking and leading account, I want you to, to know it very well because it is very, very important. So besides how good and how readable, how clean your design is, you, how you use them together depends on how good your design comes out. And also after understanding that, I explained it a little. Then you, there's another task here, which is, Which is list out what type of graphic terms do you need to fully utilize to ensure your target audience understands your design. That is the things you have to take note of. And after listing them out, explain these terms. You need to list out any five serif fonts and any sans serif fonts. Okay, let me show you something. Whenever I want to use a particular font, maybe I need this font. I, I can just go on and can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I just go to the fonts. I go to dafonts.com. I download any fonts I want. Maybe I want to start a fashion design, fashion design brand, or maybe it's anything formal or official. I'll just go here. Type out. You can see I have some say fixed fonts. I can type it out here. Maybe I need. You can type out. Maybe you know the name already. You can just type out the name here. And possibly if you don't know the name you want, of the font you want to use, you can just keep on scrolling. Check out fonts. Check out these fonts now. Okay, for example, now I want a format font. And just go with something like I want a format font. I can go with something like serif font. And I cannot keep on. Okay, this is cool. This museum. I will tap on it. And possibly I can preview. My text. Maybe I want to see how it will look on design. Can you see? So this is how it will look. I can preview it here. You can see how it will look. Even then, so I cannot go. I cannot decide. Maybe I want it or not. Then I cannot download it. Then possibly this side too. They don't have almost all the fonts here. Whenever. I come across something like that. Whenever I'm stuck, I can just go to Google. I'll go to Google. I'll go to Google. And type out. Type out the name of fonts I want to use. Because this is, I use, I also use Google fonts. Here too, you can preview the text of whatever it is you want to see how it will look before downloading. I'll go to Google. Okay. What I'm trying to explain is there are some these sites, we don't have all the fonts available. I'll do, I'll go to Google.com, just type, maybe I want poppins, for example, now. I'll just put TTF. So this TTF now, my search will be narrowed down compared to me just putting poppins. This TTF is just extension for some for some fonts. Just like you have extension for Corridor to be .cdf. You have extension for Photoshop to be PhD and all. Adobe Illustrator to be AR. So for fonts, you have TTF and OOTF. It depends on the type of fonts. As you can see, I have it here. I can now click on any link I want, then download. So that's just, that's how I use. I download, I get my fonts. I want to use for my projects. So with that being said, if I assume you guys understood what I've been saying. Sir, please, can you please um, send the links of that um, site you just mentioned, if that's possible? Yeah, I'll send it to the channel. I'll send okay, it to the channel. thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it, is it, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a question, sir. Yeah, Are you yeah. advisable to use one font throughout the design? Definitely. Definitely, it is advisable. As long as we have different widths for such fonts, that is, they have both. 
that's the talent they have slight speed they have something that they can go ahead and use this and if the fonts blend well together if they are working well together visually then go ahead do you understand yes sir yes sir yes sir Okay. Any other question? Okay, sir. Yes, we will just be treating it. Maybe one will be tallied, one will be bending, all those things. Yeah, it depends on what you want. It depends on your design. It depends on what that design is for. Do you understand? Like I mentioned, it is addressable use a particular type piece. That is, fonts belonging to the same family, as long as they are different ways. Maybe you are using that, you are using the script metallics for something very sensitive on the design and all. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Understood. Understood. Very good. Any other question? Yes, sir. Um, my question is not right. kind of related to um to this class, but um okay. it's kind of something that um it is it believable for us against next week, and that is to come up with um logo concept. So, so far, so good. I know um, logo design comes in various forms where you can use um, only text alone. You can, um, mm -hmm. yes, you can use um, pictures and text. But however, there are some certain kinds of um, logos or the sample that um, Kemi gave us is kind of different where um, we see people using angles and all. We don't know whether you can refer to materials that could help explain that section a little. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, can I see? You can just can you drop that in, on the channel? Maybe I can just see. Maybe I can add drop some tips for you. I drop okay, some sir. tips for you on the channel. Just drop yes, the material. I'll okay, go see if I drop some some tips for you. Yes, sir. Okay. I still, sorry, sir. I still have a question. Sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Is it actually okay when when a client gives you a particular job and you come up okay. with the design and with the bit PDFs of everything you've done concerning the design? Does that okay? Okay. Or just send the design. That's all. PDFs. It depends on your agreement with that client. So at times, I tend to agree to my client that I'm giving you JPEG or PNG for your logo formats. Or maybe at times that client's possibly requested for the source file. Initially, there will be some agreement. Maybe I'm giving you the source file. There will be some amount of money paying for the source file. Maybe I'm giving you a PNG. There will be some sort of agreements before you commence on any design project, you understand? Maybe you are giving that client a PDF, you are giving that client a GPS, you are even giving that client a PNG. You understand? It depends on your agreement. So you have to agree with that client that what do you want? Do you want a PDF? Do you want a GPS? Do you want a PNG? Stuff like that. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Any, any other person? So with that being said, I think just go ahead with your task, then before next week, submit your task. As usual, to my Gmail. Yes, sir. The, the video is just to upload on uh, YouTube. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we, can we handle that? Can we handle that? All right. Have a nice week ahead, guys. Take care of yourself. Guys. Thank you so much. Oh, more knowledge yeah. than Thank you stuff. so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Feel your attendance, oh. Uh, thank you, sir. Welcome.